Health Insurance, Wikipedia Audio Health insurance is insurance that covers the whole or a part of the risk of a person incurring medical expenses, spreading the risk over a large number of persons. By estimating the overall risk of health care and health system expenses over the risk pool, an insurer can develop a routine finance structure, such as a monthly premium or payroll tax, to provide the money to pay for the health care benefits specified in the insurance agreement. The benefit is administered by a central organization such as a government agency, private business, or not-for-profit entity. According to the Health Insurance Association of America, Health insurance is defined as coverage that provides for the payments of benefits as a result of sickness or injury. It includes insurance for losses from accident, medical expense, disability, or accidental death and dismemberment. A health insurance policy is The individual insured person's obligations may take several forms. Background Prescription drug plans are a form of insurance offered through some health insurance plans. In the U.S., the patient usually pays a co-payment and the prescription drug insurance part or all of the balance for drugs covered in the formulary of the plan. Such plans are routinely part of national health insurance programs. For example, in the province of Quebec, Canada. Prescription drug insurance is universally required as part of the public health insurance plan, but may be purchased and administered either through private or group plans, or through the public plan. Some, if not most, health care providers in the United States will agree to bill the insurance company if patients are willing to sign an agreement that they will be responsible for the amount that the insurance company doesn't pay. The insurance company pays out-of-network providers according to reasonable and customary charges, which may be less than the provider's usual fee. The provider may also have a separate contract with the insurer to accept what amounts to a discounted rate or capitation to the provider's standard charges. It generally costs the patient less to use an in-network provider. Premium the amount the policyholder or their sponsor pays to the health plan to purchase health coverage, deductible, the amount that the insured must pay out of pocket before the health insurer pays its share. For example, policyholders might have to pay a $500 deductible per year, before any of their health care is covered by the health insurer. It may take several doctor's visits or prescription refills before the insured person reaches the deductible and the insurance company starts to pay for care. Furthermore, most policies do not apply CO pays for doctor's visits or prescriptions against your deductible, CO payment, the amount that the insured person must pay out of pocket before the health insurer pays for a particular visit or service. For example, an insured person might pay a $45 CO payment for a doctor's visit, or to obtain a prescription. A CO payment must be paid each time a particular service is obtained, coinsurance, instead of, or in addition to, paying a fixed amount up front. The CO insurance is a percentage of the total cost that insured person may also pay. For example, the member might have to pay 20% of the cost of a surgery over and above a CO payment, while the insurance company pays the other 80%. If there is an upper limit on coinsurance, the policyholder could end up owing very little, or a great deal, depending on the actual costs of the services they obtain. Exclusions Not all services are covered. Build items like use and throw, taxes, etc. are excluded from admissible claim. The insured are generally expected to pay the full cost of non-covered services out of their own pockets, coverage limits, 
some health insurance policies only pay for health care up to a certain dollar amount. The insured person may be expected to pay any charges in excess of the health plan's maximum payment for a specific service. In addition, some insurance company schemes have annual or lifetime coverage maxima. In these cases, the health plan will stop payment when they reach the benefit maximum, and the policyholder must pay all remaining costs, out-of-pocket maxima, similar to coverage limits, except that in this case, the insured person's payment obligation ends when they reach the out-of-pocket maximum, and health insurance pays all further covered costs. Out-of-pocket maxima can be limited to a specific benefit category or can apply to all coverage provided during a specific benefit year, capitation, an amount paid by an insurer to a health care provider, for which the provider agrees to treat all members of the insurer, in-network provider, a health care provider on a list of providers pre-selected by the insurer. The insurer will offer discounted coinsurance or CO payments, or additional benefits, to a plan member to see an in-network provider. Generally, providers in-network are providers who have a contract with the insurer to accept rates further discounted from the usual and customary charges the insurer pays to out-of-network providers, prior authorization a certification or authorization that an insurer provides prior to medical service occurring. Obtaining an authorization means that the insurer is obligated to pay for the service, assuming it matches what was authorized. Many smaller, routine services do not require authorization, explanation of benefits, a document that may be sent by an insurer to a patient explaining what was covered for a medical service, and how payment amount and patient responsibility amount were determined. The Commonwealth Fund, in its annual survey, Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, compares the performance of the health care systems in Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, and the U.S. Its 2007 study found that, although the U.S. system is the most expensive, it consistently underperforms compared to the other countries. One difference between the U.S. and the other countries in the study is that the U.S. is the only country without universal health insurance coverage. The Commonwealth Fund completed its 13th annual health policy survey in 2010. A study of the survey found significant differences in access, cost burdens, and problems with health insurance that are associated with insurance design. Of the countries surveyed, the results indicated that people in the United States had more out-of-pocket expenses, more disputes with insurance companies than other countries, and more insurance payments denied. Paperwork was also higher although Germany had similarly high levels of paperwork. The Australian public health system is called Medicare, which provides free universal access to hospital treatment and subsidised out-of-hospital medical treatment. It is funded by a 2% tax levy on all taxpayers, an extra 1% levy on high-income earners, as well as general revenue. The private health system is funded by a number of private health insurance organizations. The largest of these is Medibank Private Limited, which was, until 2014, a government-owned entity, when it was privatized and listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Some private health insurers are for-profit enterprises such as Australian Unity, and some are non-profit organizations such as HCF and the HBF Health Fund. Some, such as Police Health, have membership restricted to particular groups, but the majority have open membership. Membership to most health funds is now also available through comparison websites like Money Time, Compare the Market, iSelect Limited, Chuzzy, 
comparing expert and you compare. These comparison sites operate on a commission basis by agreement with their participating health funds. The private health insurance ombudsman also operates a free website which allows consumers to search for and compare private health insurers' products, which includes information on price and level of cover. Lifetime health cover if a person has not taken out private hospital cover by July 1st after their 31st birthday, then when they do so after this time, their premiums must include a loading of 2% per annum for each year they were without hospital cover. Thus, a person taking out private cover for the first time at age 40 will pay a 20% loading. The loading is removed after 10 years of continuous hospital cover. The loading applies only to premiums for hospital cover, not to ancillary cover, Medicare levy surcharge, people whose taxable income is greater than a specified amount and who do not have an adequate level of private hospital cover must pay a 1% surcharge on top of the standard 1.5% Medicare levy. The rationale is that if the people in this income group are forced to pay more money one way or another, most would choose to purchase hospital insurance with it, with the possibility of a benefit in the event that they need private hospital treatment a euro rather than pay it in the form of extra tax as well as having to meet their own private hospital costs. The Australian government announced in May 2008 that it proposes to increase the thresholds to $100,000 for singles and $150,000 for families. These changes require legislative approval. A bill to change the law has been introduced but was not passed by the Senate. An amended version was passed on October 16, 2008. There have been criticisms that the changes will cause many people to drop their private health insurance, causing a further burden on the public hospital system, and a rise in premiums for those who stay with the private system. Other commentators believe the effect will be minimal. Most aspects of private health insurance in Australia are regulated by the Private Health Insurance Act 2007. Complaints and reporting of the private health industry is carried out by an independent government agency, the Private Health Insurance Ombudsman. The Ombudsman publishes an annual report that outlines the number and nature of complaints per health fund compared to their market share. The private health system in Australia operates on a community rating basis whereby premiums do not vary solely because of a person's previous medical history, current state of health, or their age. Balancing this are waiting periods, in particular for pre-existing conditions. Funds are entitled to impose a waiting period of up to 12 months on benefits for any medical condition the signs and symptoms of which existed during the six months ending on the day the person first took out insurance. They are also entitled to impose a 12-month waiting period for benefits for treatment relating to an obstetric condition, and a two-month waiting period for all other benefits when a person first takes out private insurance. Funds have the discretion to reduce or remove such waiting periods in individual cases. They are also free not to impose them to begin with, but this would place such a fund at risk of adverse selection, attracting a disproportionate number of members from other funds, or from the pool of intending members who might otherwise have joined other funds. It would also attract people with existing medical conditions who might not otherwise have taken out insurance at all because of the denial of benefits for 12 months due to the P rule. The benefits paid out for these conditions would create pressure on premiums for all the fund's members, causing some to drop their membership, which would lead to further rises in premiums, and a vicious cycle of higher premiums leaving members would ensue.
The first government responsibility is the fixing of the rate at which medical expenses should be negotiated, and it does so in two ways, the Ministry of Health directly negotiates prices of medicine with the manufacturers, based on the average price of sale observed in neighboring countries. A board of doctors and experts decides if the medicine provides a valuable enough medical benefit to be reimbursed. In parallel, the government fixes the reimbursement rate for medical services, this means that a doctor is free to charge the fee that he wishes for a consultation or an examination, but the social security system will only reimburse it at a preset rate. These tariffs are set annually through negotiation with doctors' representative organizations. The second government responsibility is oversight of the health insurance funds, to ensure that they are correctly managing the sums they receive, and to ensure oversight of the public hospital network. Comparisons the Australian government has introduced a number of incentives to encourage adults to take out private hospital insurance. These include Health care is mainly a constitutional, provincial government responsibility in Canada. Consequently, each province administers its own health insurance program. The federal government influences health insurance by virtue of its fiscal powers a euro it transfers cash and tax points to the provinces to help cover the costs of the universal health insurance programs. Under the Canada Health Act, the federal government mandates and enforces the requirement that all people have free access to what are termed medically necessary services defined primarily as care delivered by physicians or in hospitals, and the nursing component of long-term residential care. If provinces allow doctors or institutions to charge patients for medically necessary services, the federal government reduces its payments to the provinces by the amount of the prohibited charges. Collectively, the public provincial health insurance systems in Canada are frequently referred to as Medicare. This public insurance is tax-funded out of general government revenues, although British Columbia and Ontario levy a mandatory premium with flat rates for individuals and families to generate additional revenues a euro in essence a surtax. Private health insurance is allowed but in six provincial governments only for services that the public health plans do not cover, for example, semi-private or private rooms in hospitals and prescription drug plans. Four provinces allow insurance for services also mandated by the Canada Health Act, but in practice there is no market for it. All Canadians are free to use private insurance for elective medical services such as laser vision correction surgery, cosmetic surgery, and other non-basic medical procedures. Some 65% of Canadians have some form of supplementary private health insurance, many of them receive it through their employers. Private sector services not paid for by the government account for nearly 30% of total health care spending. In 2005, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled, in Chaoli v. Quebec, that the province's prohibition on private insurance for health care already insured by the provincial plan violated the Quebec Charter of Rights and Freedoms and in particular the sections dealing with the right to life and security, if there were unacceptably long wait times for treatment, as was alleged in this case. The ruling has not changed the overall pattern of health insurance across Canada but has spurred on attempts to tackle the core issues of supply and demand and the impact of wait times. The National System of Health Insurance was instituted in 1945, just after the end of the Second World War. It was a compromise between Gaullist and Communist representatives in the French Parliament. The conservative Gaullists were opposed to a state-run health care system, while the Communists were supportive of a complete nationalization of health care along a British beverage model. 
The resulting program is profession-based, all people working are required to pay a portion of their income to a not-for-profit health insurance fund, which mutualizes the risk of illness, and which reimburses medical expenses at varying rates. Children and spouses of insured people are eligible for benefits, as well. Each fund is free to manage its own budget, and used to reimburse medical expenses at the rate it saw fit, however following a number of reforms in recent years, the majority of funds provide the same level of reimbursement and benefits. The government has two responsibilities in this system. Today, this system is more or less intact. All citizens and legal foreign residents of France are covered by one of these mandatory programs, which continue to be funded by worker participation. However, since 1945, a number of major changes have been introduced. Firstly, the different health care funds now all reimburse at the same rate. Secondly, since 2000, the government now provides health care to those who are not covered by a mandatory regime. This regime, unlike the worker-financed ones, is financed via general taxation and reimburses at a higher rate than the profession-based system for those who cannot afford to make up the difference. Finally, to counter the rise in health care costs, the government has installed two plans which require insured people to declare a referring doctor in order to be fully reimbursed for specialist visits, and which installed a mandatory CO pay of 1A for a doctor visit, 0,50A for each box of medicine prescribed, and a fee of 16A euro 18A per day for hospital stays and for expensive procedures. Australia Canada an important element of the French insurance system is solidarity, the more ill a person becomes, the less the person pays. This means that for people with serious or chronic illnesses, the insurance system reimburses them 100% of expenses, and waives their CO pay charges. China France Germany Insurance Systems Statutory Health Insurance Slash Gazette Slash Crank and Versa Krung Finally, for fees that the mandatory system does not cover, there is a large range of private complementary insurance plans available. The market for these programs is very competitive, and often subsidized by the employer, which means that premiums are usually modest. 85% of French people benefit from complementary private health insurance. Germany has the world's oldest national social health insurance system, with origins dating back to Otto von Bismarck's Sickness Insurance Law of 1883. Currently 85% of the population is covered by a basic health insurance plan provided by statute which provides a standard level of coverage. The remainder opt for private health insurance, which frequently offers additional benefits. According to the World Health Organization, Germany's health care system was 77% government-funded and 23% privately funded as of 2004. History the government partially reimburses the costs for low-wage workers, whose premiums are kept at a predetermined value. Higher-wage workers pay a premium based on their salary. They may also opt for private insurance, which is generally more expensive, but whose price may vary based on the individual's health status. Reimbursement is on a fee-for-service basis but the number of physicians allowed to accept statutory health insurance in a given locale is regulated by the government and professional societies. CO payments were introduced in the 1980s in an attempt to prevent over-utilization. 
The average length of hospital stay in Germany has decreased in recent years from 14 days to 9 days, still considerably longer than average stays in the United States. Part of the difference is that the chief consideration for hospital reimbursement is the number of hospital days as opposed to procedures or diagnosis. Drug costs have increased substantially, rising nearly 60% from 1991 through 2005. Despite attempts to contain costs, overall health care expenditures rose to 10.7% of GDP in 2005 comparable to other Western European nations, but substantially less than that spent in the U.S. Germans are offered three kinds of social security insurance dealing with the physical status of a person and which are CO financed by employer and employee, health insurance, accident insurance, and long-term care insurance. Germany has a universal multi-payer system with two main types of health insurance, law-enforced health insurance and private insurance. Both systems struggle with the increasing cost of medical treatment and the changing demography. About 87.5% of the persons with health insurance are members of the public system, while 12.5% are covered by private insurance. There are many differences between the public health insurance and private insurance. In general the benefits and costs in the private insurance are better for young people without family. There are hard salary requirements to join the private insurance because it is getting more expensive advanced in years. The statutory health insurance is part of the German social insurance system together with the statutory accident insurance, the statutory old age and disability insurance, the unemployment insurance and the long-term care insurance. Since 2009, health insurance is mandatory for anyone living in Germany. Function the statutory health insurance is a compulsory insurance for employees with a yearly income below a 54.900 and others. With the Imperial Bill of June 15, 1883 and its update from April 10, 1892 the health insurance bill was created, which introduced compulsory health insurance for workers. Austria followed Germany in 1888. Hungary in 1891 and Switzerland in 1911. Organization On April 29, 1869 the County Health Insurance Ill in Bavaria created the first law that introduced and regulated health insurance for low-income earners. It was limited to individuals with an income less than 2,000 mark per year and guaranteed the insured person a 60% minimum income during sickness. Function of the statutory health insurance according to A1SGBV is to preserve, recreate, or improve health of the insured person. According to A27SGBV this includes to subdue the afflictions of illness. Private health insurance slash private crank and versa krung. Law enforced accident insurance slash gazette slash unfall versa krung. Law enforced long term care insurance slash gazette slash pflegever citurum. All insured fundamentally have the same entitlement for benefits. The scope of benefits is regulated in SGBV and limited by A1 SGBV benefits have to be adequate, appropriate, and economic and shall not exceed the necessary for the insured. Additional benefits can only be granted based on particular regulations based on formal law. These are e.g. additional service for the prevention of sickness, care at home, household support rehabilitation etc. Based on the principle of solidarity and compulsory membership, the calculation of fees differs from private health insurance in that it does not depend on personal health or health criteria like age or sex, 
but is connected to one's personal income by a fixed percentage. The aim is to cover the risk of high cost from illness that an individual cannot bear alone. The German legislature has reduced the number of public health insurance organizations from 1,209 in 1991 down to 123 in 2015. The public health insurance organizations are the Erzatzkassen, Allgemeine Ortskrankenkassen, Betriebskrankenkassen, Inyungskrankenkassen, Napschaft, and Landwirtschaft like Krankenkasse. As long as a person has the right to choose his or her health insurance, he or she can join any insurance that is willing to include the individual. Accident insurance is covered by the employer and basically covers all risks for commuting to work and at the workplace. Long-term care is covered half and half by employer and employee and covers cases in which a person is not able to manage his or her daily routine. It is about 2% of a yearly salaried income or pension, with employers matching the contribution of the employee. In 2013 a state-funded private care insurance was introduced. Insurance contracts that fit certain criteria are subsidized with €60 Euro per year. It is expected that the number of contracts will grow from 400,000 by end of 2013 to over a million within the next few years. These contracts have been criticized by consumer rights foundations. There are two major types of insurance programs available in Japan a Euro Employees Health Insurance, and National Health Insurance. National health insurance is designed for people who are not eligible to be members of any employment-based health insurance program. Although private health insurance is also available, all Japanese citizens, permanent residents, and non-Japanese with a visa lasting one year or longer are required to be enrolled in either national health insurance or employees' health insurance. In 2006, a new system of health insurance came into force in the Netherlands. This new system avoids the two pitfalls of adverse selection and moral hazard associated with traditional forms of health insurance by using a combination of regulation and an insurance equalization pool. Moral hazard is avoided by mandating that insurance companies provide at least one policy which meets a government set minimum standard level of coverage and all adult residents are obliged by law to purchase this coverage from an insurance company of their choice. All insurance companies receive funds from the equalization pool to help cover the cost of this government-mandated coverage. This pool is run by a regulator which collects salary-based contributions from employers, which make up about 50% of all healthcare funding and funding from the government to cover people who cannot afford health care, which makes up an additional 5%. The remaining 45% of health care funding comes from insurance premiums paid by the public, for which companies compete on price, though the variation between the various competing insurers is only about 5%. However, Insurance companies are free to sell additional policies to provide coverage beyond the national minimum. These policies do not receive funding from the equalization pool, but cover additional treatments, such as dental procedures and physiotherapy, which are not paid for by the mandatory policy. Funding from the equalization pool is distributed to insurance companies for each person they insure under the required policy. However, high-risk individuals get more from the pool, and low-income persons and children under 18 have their insurance paid for entirely. Because of this, insurance companies no longer find insuring high-risk individuals an unappealing proposition avoiding the potential problem of adverse selection. Insurance companies are not allowed to have CO payments, caps, or deductibles, 
or to deny coverage to any person applying for a policy, or to charge anything other than their nationally set and published standard premiums. Therefore, every person buying insurance will pay the same price as everyone else buying the same policy, and every person will get at least the minimum level of coverage. Since 1974, New Zealand has had a system of universal no-fault health insurance for personal injuries through the Accident Compensation Corporation. The ACC scheme covers most of the costs of related to treatment of injuries acquired in New Zealand regardless of how the injury occurred, and also covers lost income and costs related to long-term rehabilitation, such as home and vehicle modifications for those seriously injured. Funding from the scheme comes from a combination of levies on employers' payroll, levies on an employee's taxable income, levies on vehicle licensing fees and petrol, and funds from the general taxation pool. Rwanda is one of a handful of low-income countries that has implemented community-based health insurance schemes in order to reduce the financial barriers that prevent poor people from seeking and receiving needed health services. This scheme has helped reach 90% of the country's population with health care coverage. Healthcare in Switzerland is universal and is regulated by the Swiss Federal Law on Health Insurance. Health insurance is compulsory for all persons residing in Switzerland. It is therefore the same throughout the country and avoids double standards in health care. Insurers are required to offer this basic insurance to everyone, regardless of age or medical condition. They are not allowed to make a profit off this basic insurance, but can on supplemental plans. The universal compulsory coverage provides for treatment in case of illness or accident and pregnancy. Health insurance covers the costs of medical treatment, medication, and hospitalization of the insured. However, the insured person pays part of the costs up to a maximum, which can vary based on the individually chosen plan, premiums are then adjusted accordingly. The whole healthcare system is geared towards to the general goals of enhancing general public health and reducing costs while encouraging individual responsibility. The Swiss healthcare system is a combination of public, subsidized private and totally private systems. Insurance premiums vary from insurance company to company, the excess level individually chosen, the place of residence of the insured person and the degree of supplementary benefit coverage chosen. The insured person has full freedom of choice among the approximately 60 recognized health care providers competent to treat their condition on the understanding that the costs are covered by the insurance up to the level of the official tariff. There is freedom of choice when selecting an insurance company to which one pays a premium usually on a monthly basis. The insured person pays the insurance premium for the basic plan up to 8% of their personal income. If a premium is higher than this, the government gives the insured person a cash subsidy to pay for any additional premium. The compulsory insurance can be supplemented by private complementary insurance policies that allow for coverage of some of the treatment categories not covered by the basic insurance or to improve the standard of room and service in case of hospitalization. This can include complementary medicine, routine dental treatment and private ward hospitalization, which are not covered by the compulsory insurance. As far as the compulsory health insurance is concerned, the insurance companies cannot set any conditions relating to age, sex or state of health for coverage. Although the level of premium can vary from one company to another, they must be identical within the same company for all insured persons of the same age group and region, regardless of sex or state of health. This does not apply to complementary insurance, where premiums are risk-based. 
Switzerland has an infant mortality rate of about 3.6 out of 1,000. The general life expectancy in 2012 was for men 80.5 years compared to 84.7 years for women. These are the world's best figures. The UK's National Health Service is a publicly funded healthcare system that provides coverage to everyone normally resident in the UK. It is not strictly an insurance system because there are no premiums collected, costs are not charged at the patient level and costs are not prepaid from a pool. However, it does achieve the main aim of insurance which is to spread financial risk arising from ill health. The costs of running the NHS are met directly from general taxation. The NHS provides the majority of health care in the UK, including primary care, inpatient care, long-term health care, ophthalmology and dentistry. Private health care has continued parallel to the NHS, paid for largely by private insurance, but it is used by less than 8% of the population, and generally as a top-up to NHS services. There are many treatments that the private sector does not provide. For example, health insurance on pregnancy is generally not covered or covered with restricting clauses. Typical exclusions for BUPA schemes include Aging, menopause, and puberty, AIDS-HIV, allergies or allergic disorders, birth control, conception, sexual problems and sex changes, chronic conditions, complications from excluded or restricted conditions-treatment, convalescence, rehabilitation and general nursing care, cosmetic, reconstructive, or weight loss treatment, deafness, dental-slash-oral treatment, dialysis, drugs and dressings for outpatient or take-home use a euro, experimental drugs and treatment, eyesight, HRT and bone densitometry, learning, difficulties, behavioral and developmental problems, overseas treatment and repatriation, physical aids and devices, pre-existing or special conditions, pregnancy and childbirth, screening and preventive treatment, sleep problems and disorders, speech disorders, temporary relief of symptoms. There are a number of other companies in the United Kingdom which include, among others, Ace Limited, AXA, Aviva, Bupa, Groupama Healthcare, WPA and Pru Health. Similar exclusions apply, depending on the policy which is purchased. Recently the main representative body of British medical physicians, the British Medical Association, adopted a policy statement expressing concerns about developments in the health insurance market in the UK. In its annual representative meeting which had been agreed earlier by the consultant's policy group stating that the BMA was extremely concerned that the policies of some private healthcare insurance companies are preventing or restricting patients exercising choice about the consultants who treat them, the hospital at which they are treated, making top-up payments to cover any gap between the funding provided by their insurance company and the cost of their chosen private treatment. It went into call on the BMA to publicize these concerns so that patients are fully informed when making choices about private health care insurance. The practice of insurance companies deciding which consultant a patient may see as opposed to GPS or patients is referred to as open referral. The NHS offers patients a choice of hospitals and consultants and does not charge for its services. The private sector has been used to increase NHS capacity despite a large proportion of the British public opposing such involvement. According to the World Health Organization, government funding covered 86% of overall health care expenditures in the UK as of 2004 with private expenditures covering the remaining 
Nearly one in three patients receiving NHS hospital treatment is privately insured and could have the cost paid for by their insurer. Some private schemes provide cash payments to patients who opt for NHS treatment, to deter use of private facilities. A report, by private health analysts Lang and Buisson, in November 2012, estimated that more than 250,000 operations were performed on patients with private medical insurance each year at a cost of a pound 359 million. In addition, a pound 609 million was spent on emergency medical or surgical treatment. Private medical insurance does not normally cover emergency treatment but subsequent recovery could be paid for if the patient were moved into a private patient unit. The United States health care system relies heavily on private health insurance, which is the primary source of coverage for most Americans. As of 2012 about 61% of Americans had private health insurance according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality found that in 2011, private insurance was billed for 12.2 million U.S. inpatient hospital stays and incurred approximately $112.5 billion in aggregate inpatient hospital costs. Public programs provide the primary source of coverage for most senior citizens and for low-income children and families who meet certain eligibility requirements. The primary public programs are Medicare, a federal social insurance program for seniors and certain disabled individuals, and Medicaid, funded jointly by the federal government and states but administered at the state level which covers certain very low-income children and their families. Together, Medicare and Medicaid accounted for approximately 63% of the national inpatient hospital costs in 2011. SCIP is a federal-state partnership that serves certain children and families who do not qualify for Medicaid but who cannot afford private coverage. Other public programs include military health benefits provided through TRICARE and the Veterans Health Administration and benefits provided through the Indian Health Service. Some states have additional programs for low-income individuals. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, health advocacy companies began to appear to help patients deal with the complexities of the health care system. The complexity of the health care system has resulted in a variety of problems for the American public. A study found that 62% of persons declaring bankruptcy in 2007 had unpaid medical expenses of $1,000 or more, and in 92% of these cases the medical debts exceeded $5,000. Nearly 80% who filed for bankruptcy had health insurance. The Medicare and Medicaid programs were estimated to soon account for 50% of all national health spending. These factors and many others fueled interest in an overhaul of the health care system in the United States. In 2010 President Obama signed into law the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. This act includes an individual mandate that every American must have medical insurance. Health policy experts such as David Cutler and Jonathan Gruber, as well as the American Medical Insurance Lobby Group America's Health Insurance Plans, argued this provision was required in order to provide guaranteed issue and a community rating, which address unpopular features of America's health insurance system such as premium weightings, exclusions for pre-existing conditions, and the pre-screening of insurance applicants. During 26A Euro 28 March, the Supreme Court heard arguments regarding the validity of the Act. The Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act was determined to be constitutional on June 28, 2012. Scotus determined that Congress had the authority to apply the individual mandate within its taxing powers. 
In the late 19th century, accident insurance began to be available, which operated much like modern disability insurance. This payment model continued until the start of the 20th century in some jurisdictions, where all laws regulating health insurance actually referred to disability insurance. Accident insurance was first offered in the United States by the Franklin Health Assurance Company of Massachusetts. This firm, founded in 1850, offered insurance against injuries arising from railroad and steamboat accidents. Sixty organizations were offering accident insurance in the U.S. by 1866, but the industry consolidated rapidly soon thereafter. While there were earlier experiments, the origins of sickness coverage in the U.S. effectively date from 1890. The first employer-sponsored group disability policy was issued in 1911. Before the development of medical expense insurance, patients were expected to pay health care costs out of their own pockets, under what is known as the fee-for-service business model. During the middle to late 20th century, traditional disability insurance evolved into modern health insurance programs. One major obstacle to this development was that early forms of comprehensive health insurance were enjoined by courts for violating the traditional ban on corporate practice of the professions by for-profit corporations. State legislatures had to intervene and expressly legalize health insurance as an exception to that traditional rule. Today, most comprehensive private health insurance programs cover the cost of routine, preventive, and emergency health care procedures, and most prescription drugs. Hospital and medical expense policies were introduced during the first half of the 20th century. During the 1920s, individual hospitals began offering services to individuals on a prepaid basis eventually leading to the development of Blue Cross organizations. The predecessors of today's health maintenance organizations originated beginning in 1929, through the 1930s and on during World War II. The Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974 regulated the operation of a health benefit plan if an employer chooses to establish one, which is not required. The Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1985 gives an ex-employee the right to continue coverage under an employer-sponsored group health benefit plan. Historically, health maintenance organizations tended to use the term health plan, while commercial insurance companies used the term health insurance. A health plan can also refer to a subscription-based medical care arrangement offered through HMOs, preferred provider organizations, or point-of-service plans. These plans are similar to prepaid dental, prepaid legal, and prepaid vision plans. Prepaid health plans typically pay for a fixed number of services. The services offered are usually at the discretion of a utilization review nurse who is often contracted through the managed care entity providing the subscription health plan. This determination may be made either prior to or after hospital admission. India There are different options available to both employers and employees. There are different types of plans including health savings accounts and plans with a high or low deductible. The plans that have the high deductibles typically cost the employee less for the monthly premiums, but the part they pay for each time they use their insurance, as well as the overall deductible before the insurance covers anything is much higher. These types of plans are good for the people who rarely go to the doctor and need little health care. The lower deductible plans are typically more expensive, however, they save the employee from having to spend a lot of money out of pocket for services and treatment. 
The recent trend for employers is to offer the high deductible plans, called consumer driven health care plans, because it costs them less overall for the care their employees need, but it is a lower monthly premium for the employees. Comprehensive health insurance pays a percentage of the cost of hospital and physician charges after a deductible or a CO pay is met by the insured. These plans are generally expensive because of the high potential benefit payout a euro $1 million to $5 million is common a euro and because of the vast array of covered benefits. Scheduled health insurance plans are not meant to replace a traditional comprehensive health insurance plans and are more of a basic policy providing access to day-to-day -day health care such as going to the doctor or getting a prescription drug. In recent years, these plans have taken the name Minimed Plans or Association Plans. The term association is often used to describe them because they require membership in an association that must exist for some other purpose than to sell insurance. Examples include the Healthcare Credit Union Association. These plans may provide benefits for hospitalization and surgical but these benefits will be limited. Scheduled plans are not meant to be effective for catastrophic events. These plans cost much less than comprehensive health insurance. They generally pay limited benefits amounts directly to the service provider, and payments are based upon the plan's schedule of benefits. As of 2005, Annual benefit maxima for a typical mini-scheduled health insurance plan may range from $1,000 to $25,000. A recent study by PricewaterhouseCoopers examining the drivers of rising health care costs in the U.S. pointed to increased utilization created by increased consumer demand, new treatments, and more intensive diagnostic testing, as the most significant. However, Wendell Potter, a longtime PR representative for the health insurance industry, has noted that the group which sponsored this study, AHIP, is a front group funded by various insurance companies. People in developed countries are living longer. The population of those countries is aging, and a larger group of senior citizens requires more intensive medical care than a young healthier population. Advances in medicine and medical technology can also increase the cost of medical treatment. Lifestyle-related factors can increase utilization and therefore insurance prices, such as, increases in obesity caused by insufficient exercise and unhealthy food choices, excessive alcohol use, smoking, and use of street drugs. Other factors noted by the PWC study included the movement to broader access plans, higher-priced technologies, and cost shifting from Medicaid and the uninsured to private payers. Other researchers note that doctors and other health care providers are rewarded for merely treating patients rather than curing them and that patients insured through employer group policies have incentives to go to the absolute best HCPs rather than the most cost-effective ones. Japan the price of health insurance for retired and active duty military personnel has gone up from $19 billion a decade ago to $52 billion in 2012. TRICARE, the government veterans' health insurance program, makes up 9% of the total budget for the Department of Defense. In 2007, 87% of Californians had some form of health insurance. Services in California range from private offerings, HMOs, PPOs to public programs, Medi-Cal, Medicare, and Healthy Families. Netherlands California developed a solution to assist people across the state and is one of the few states to have an office devoted to giving people tips and resources to get the best care possible. 
California's Office of the Patient Advocate was established July 2000 to publish a yearly health care quality report card on the top HMOs, PPOs, and medical groups and to create and distribute helpful tips and resources to give Californians the tools needed to get the best care. Additionally, California has a help center that assists Californians when they have problems with their health insurance. The help center is run by the Department of Managed Health Care, the government department that oversees and regulates HMOs and some PPOs. New Zealand Rwanda the state passed health care reform in 2006 in order to greater decrease the uninsured rate among its citizens. The Federal Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act is largely based on Massachusetts health reform. Due to that colloquialism, the Massachusetts reform has been nicknamed as Romney Care after then-Governor Mitt Romney. As of 2017, Massachusetts has the highest rate of insured citizens in the United States at 97%. In the U.S., insurers will often only make use of health care providers that are independently surveyed by a recognized quality assurance program, such as being accredited by accreditation schemes such as the Joint Commission and the American Accreditation Health Care Commission. Switzerland United Kingdom United States History and Evolution Health Plan vs. Health Insurance Comprehensive vs. Scheduled Factors Affecting Insurance Prices Military California Massachusetts Standards of hospitals and clinics used by insurance companies.